Seven Drummers. And we hope y'all have a wonderful day. Hi guys, I'm at now right. Filming Jara Supper. Yes! I love it. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm all right now. Film and Jara Safari. Enjoy Omar with the beautiful boy Omar. Responsibly. I'm sure that you all heard the phrase, we do 
use, reuse, recycle. But not everyone may realize that that is the order that the lot of actions in. A lot of people jump to recycling, which is wonderful, but we do want to make sure that we are reducing and reusing whenever we can, even before we get to that recycling step. Um, out to the right side, there's um, 
have some wildebeest as well as some eggs and cattle. So the animals really like the water there. Sean? Um, but even close to us, just right on the side of the road on the left here are some springboks. Uh, these little guys get their name because of their jumping ability. They are able to spring themselves six feet vertically and 13 feet forward. But when they run and jump at the same time, the springbok can reach speeds of 60 miles an hour, which actually places them in the top five. Many South African sports teams will use the springbok as their mascot because of their speed and agility. Each one of their horns can reach three to four feet in length, oh, okay. and although they are long, they are actually not too heavy. They have a hollow honeycomb-like structure that allows blood to pump through them, releasing excess body heat. It sort of acts like their own personal air conditioning unit. Also to the right is the rest of the wildebeest herds, or through the grass there. Look at that. Wildebeest herds are on migration to the and about 1.5 million wildebeest will migrate hundreds of miles across Africa every year. Looks like the San Coli cattle is going to walk right along our side here on the right. In many African cultures, owning San Coli cattle is considered a symbol of wealth. Typically, the owners will allow them to wander as they please during the day, and at night, they will gather them up into pens that they call bones. Oh, here we go. It's much easier to see in the side of on the left side. herds where all of the female and their offspring will live together in groups while the males will typically go off on their own once they reach maturity. A baby elephant is not easy to come by. Their gestation period is 22 months and a baby elephant will already weigh about 250 pounds when it's born. But something really cool that we can do to help elephants uh, in particular would be recycling our electronics. There is a mineral within our cell phone called colchan that is mined in a lot of the habitats that elephants live in. Pretty much the individual clear cut landscape or underground mineral, which of course is destroying the habitats that the elephants need to live. So what we can do to help would be if we ever upgrade our cell phone or find an old flip phone that we still have in a drawer somewhere, we can recycle that old phone. That way the coltan can be removed and reused, and we don't need to cut down so many trees where the elephants live. All the office supply stores do offer electronic recycling to get a clean look up to see which one will be closest to your house. We are going to keep our eyes open though to see if we can find any more elephants. And actually these red clay pits on both sides of the road are a good indicator that some might be nearby. Elephants will eat red clay to gain extra nutrients that they typically wouldn't get from their herbivore diet. Or it looks like I can see maybe two more elephants up ahead here on the left side. Hopefully we'll get a better view in just a minute. Out here on the Harambee Wildlife Reserve, there are scientists that research the animals that live here. And a cool project they've been working on is called the Elephant and Bee Project. Scientists have determined that elephants are afraid of bees. That's because they have really strong hearing. They can hear the buzzing from far away. And the elephants have very sensitive skin, so they do not want to get stung. That information was then taken over to farmers in Kenya that were having conflicts with elephants raiding their farmland. And the scientists helped them to develop the high fences. These fences were super successful because just the sound of the buzzing kept the elephants away, which kept the farmers' crops safe. 
It kept the elephants safe from any farmer retaliation, and it provided another product that the farmers could sell, and that would be the honey that the bees produced. So it really was a win-win all around, and it's pretty cool that all of that research happened right here on this reserve. Warthog. 
Um, even if you can't see it though, there are some of the warthog burrows in the rocks close to the one here. Warthogs are the largest burrow animal. Like they will take their own burrows or borrow them from another animal and they will back in, keeping their really really sharp tusks exposed. That way if a predator were to come along, they'll be able to jump into action very quickly. Back over on the right side, these white antelope are called scimitar horned oryxes, um, which is a type of desert antelope. There's actually two more antelope up here on the right. And um, this one, the dark brown one with horns, is called a bonzebot. And just behind him, the one with the, uh, without horns, the shaggy or bird, is called a waterbot. Uh, Bonchabots, though, are the ones that have the really cool story. Back in the 1800s, Bonchabots were poached nearly to extinction, leaving only 17 individuals left on Earth. Luckily, a farmer noticed that the species was struggling, so he decided to protect the Bonchabots within his to this day, the species has now recovered to numbers in the 3,000s. All 3,000 of those individuals are still only found on protected lands like this. But we do hope that one day, through even further conservation efforts, the Bonsabak will be reintroduced back into the water.
猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜猜